Dr. Joseph Mastropolo is a physiologist and professor emeritus of Cal State Long Beach. He is a young earth creationist, the type of creationist who believes the world is 6,000 years, that the Grand Canyon was formed during a 40-day global flood, and that ancient people were genetically perfect, meaning they lived for 900 years, had photographic memory that could hold volumes of information, were much more physically fit than we were, and had absolutely no genetic defects. You look at living things, all of them die. That isn't evolution, that's devolution. All of them get worse with time. That's not evolution, that's devolution. We get worse with time. We all die. Nobody has ever seen evolution. Everybody has always seen devolution. So you indoctrinate all of these kids, and what do you end up with? They look at nature and they say, this is a bunch of baloney. And then what do they say? The public schools are teaching us trash. And then what do they say? I'm not gonna send my kids to public school, I'm gonna homeschool. Kara Kuzan is a high school biology teacher at Paramount High School. Um, I feel like whether or not I believe in God or whether or not um, the teachers do or the administrators do, we have a lot to follow and that is separation of church and state. And we're always searching, no matter who you are. And I think that people find satisfaction in saying things are the way they are and it's almost like they're convincing themselves that there definitely is a God because I go to church every Sunday and I think that's part of why people want to teach it because if they teach it then it makes it real. John Boyle is a professor emeritus at Cerritos College and taught biology for over 32 years. Do you think creationism in any of its forms should be taught in high school science classes? No. Can you elaborate? Can I elaborate a little bit? Sure. Uh, the reason I, I feel that way is because creationism in its espoused form uh, does not meet the criteria that are established as a science. And, you know, I, I would qualify that to, I don't know qualify, but Certainly people are, are free, one of the great things about this country is people are free to believe whatever they want. Now, I might try to persuade them otherwise, but, but they're free to believe whatever they want. However, um, to teach creationism as a science does a disservice to the education of the students because it's not a science. And the reason I say that is that in science you have to have testable hypotheses. And those hypotheses have to be framed in a way that you can design an experiment, results of which could disprove your hypothesis. That doesn't work for creationism. My cameraman, Art Gutierrez, and myself took one last look at a creationist, a man named Garth Gessman. Gessman is a Compton firefighter who is also a creation enthusiast. While he wouldn't let us film our conversation, I can tell you what he spoke about. For one hour, he showed us his sizable DVD collection, which included the usual creationist DVDs from Answers in Genesis and similar creation groups. He told us about all the things that Master Polo did, about Mount St. Helens and the Grand Canyon, about his journey to New Guinea to look for pterodactyls about the forges and fakery of archaeology. He even brought up things that I had no idea had to do with evolution at all. You done taping? Like aliens and seven types of close encounters. After our talk with Gesman, Art disclosed with me some of his thoughts about what we heard. So what do you think? I got scared in there, dude. Seriously. Uh -huh, you did? Yeah, dude. Like I, what? You know, I just when these people are so like into it, 
it, it, it kind of like, it's like, well, I'm, I'm, I kind of get the feeling like I'm around a crazy person. 